started running up to you talking about should we get into it i think we should probably get into it man we've been uh chatting for a little bit now and uh yeah you know we gave everybody a few minutes to hop in hey mr noodle speaking to everybody hopping in there's another one I'm going to play some uh, Tie the Tasmanian Tiger, shall we? A game I've always been interested in, but never had the chance to try out until now. Devil May Cry is the other one you're excited for, and the Final Fantasy series. Yeah, I mean, and I know for a fact those are games that I'm going to want to complete eventually. I'm not saying that it's going to happen, like, right now or anything like that. Um, or even for sure, you know, because the Final Fantasy games especially, those are long as hell. But... I know they're going on my list of stuff that I would like to complete, though. So I already know I like Final Fantasy XII. And X was never one of my favorites, but I never got super far into it either. Um, so yeah, maybe maybe I'll like it a bit more once I play farther into it. And then X-2, I never, I never played X-2 at all. It's very fan y and it just kind of always turned me off uh, from playing it. But I'm excited to give it a try, though. Okay, nice little intro here. I don't. I'll get help. I thought we had subtitles. I guess that's only for like in-game stuff, not the cutscenes. Because I did go through the options real quick, and I made sure subtitles were turned on. But Ty looks a little angry, man. <laughs> he needs to loosen up a little bit. Give, give us a little smile. Come on. It's supposed to be a, a cute, don't cuddly mascot afraid. character here. What the hell? I am Nandu Gili, the Bunyip Elder. Can I might? It's time you knew the truth. Years ago, a great battle was fought over the fate of five mystic talismans. Okay. The game's turned up like all the way, by the way. Turned up on the back end. Remember the comet. That looks a little bit better. No, you mammals don't deserve to be at the top of the food chain. So this dude's mad because mammals are on top of the food chain. <laughs> oh, it's like a whole gang of, ta gang of uh, Tasmanian tigers, eh? They're like some elite forces here or something. Destroying missiles and shit with their their boomerangs. What the hell is going on here? Now to restore the natural order once and for all. They gonna make a miss joke? No, okay. <laughs> I was waiting for some some cheesy corny. Oh, you missed a uh, sort of joke. Cause you know boomerang. What the hell? Wait, are we, like, finding other Tasmanian tigers that have been transported through time or something? Is that what's going on? I'm so confused. This this whole intro cutscene did nothing to explain the world to me. It just confused the hell out of me so far. <laughs> so, a bunch of Tasmanian tigers. Okay, here we go. Boss Cass were trapped in the dreaming. Mom? Dad? Word grows that Boss Cass is seeking out the talismans again. He must be stopped at all costs. It's up to you to find the talismans before he does. It's up to me to save my family. Oi, Ty! Are you okay? Murray? Oh, am I glad to see you. Oh, you're never going to believe what just happened. I was playing in the forest when the ground suddenly... And that's when you showed up. Right. Sounds like you've got a fair deacon adventure ahead of you, mate. Not that I'm into that sort of thing. I'd much rather be at home watching the footy. But I tell you what, you do the adventuring and I'll help you out where I can. I don't like how he speaks out of the side of his mouth, man. <laughs> it's weird. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't know anything about Tasmania Tigers in real life. Maybe that's just how they look. Welcome Their mouth's always closed and the side of it's open. Mate. 
By the way, whenever you like... see one of these signs, I won't be far away. I've heard that if you press the action button, you can talk to me, whatever that means. Okay. But like, it looks now really weird to me. To brass tacks. If you're gonna be out adventuring, then you'll need another boomerang. And I know just the place to find one. <laughs> All right, where's that? Head down to Bly Bly Station. Bly Bly. There. All right, so we're heading to Bly Bly Station to get ourselves a new boomerang. What, what's wrong with the boomerang I got? Why can't I just keep using this one? I like the one I got. All right, so yeah, I played, like I said, I played with it a little bit just to make sure everything was working. So yeah, I know we got this thing so we can aim kind of in first person here. Uh, it seems like whatever those creatures are, they're invulnerable. So can't really mess with them so much. You can jump all the way down to the bottom here. You won't die. You will take some damage, but. Oh, this looks like where that last battle or whatever took place. Where they knocked all the gems out. So my guess is, is we're going to have to come back here once we unlock more gems and stuff, right? And then we'll be slotting them back in here. Alright, so the controls are backwards. Can we, can we fix those controls? Ties view? Normal maybe instead of flipped? Is that, is that what we want? No. Left still moves us to the right. Right still moves us to the left. Is there no way to flip that? <laughs> Wait, no, no, no. Don't quit. Go back to the options, man. Controls. Okay, so that didn't do anything. Might as well put that back like that. Type A, B. Throw, bite, lock on, ties you. No. Sadly, no way we can change it, it seems like. But, eh, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. Can we... Yeah, we can pull the camera out. One as far back as possible. Can I... <laughs> he didn't like that too much. Can we talk to him here? Is this the the Bly Bly Kill thing that he was talking about? You'll find oh no, okay. He's just telling us to go to Bly Bly Station again. I guess it was just kind of leading us there. Right, because that's where we had the cutscene at, but then whenever we loaded into the game, we were over here. So I thought, you know, that was somewhere new. I didn't realize that's where we had been talking the entire time. The game looks pretty decent for a PS2 game, right? I think this is just the starting area. I feel like it could have been a little more colorful, but then again, I guess it was probably going for that, you know, desert mesa sort of biome look, which is just very red and brown. Not a whole lot you can do about that, I suppose. But like the characters look nice. The animations look pretty nice. The environment as far as like the models and for the PS2 textures look pretty decent. Good day, Julius. Now, if I just reroute these wires to I said good day, mate. I is death. Oh, I mean, a little bit. Me. Oh, I didn't see you there. I was just making some last minute adjustments. Well, 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 you must be Ty. G'day. That's me. So, you old coot. <laughs> What's this contraption do? <laughs> this contraption is the key to finding the talismans. Why is this so? It's quite simple, really. It uses an oscillatory microfeeder to scan for trace energy signals that match the unique... Hey, thank you for the five bits, Mr. Noodle. Appreciate it, love. Why is it not going? Did it... No, it didn't freeze. The game's still going. Uh, okay. For some reason, I randomly had to hit the X button there. Like, all these other ones, it's just automatically going through the conversations for me, but that one I had to hit the button for. Hey, what's up, Rue? Happy to see you can make it tonight, man. Just playing a little bit of Ty the Tasmanian Tiger. Nate uh, gifted it to me a while back, and sadly the disc wasn't working, but we got it up and running. So hopefully everything goes smoothly tonight. This machine doesn't just find where the talismans are, it actually teleports them here. Struck me lucky. And that, my friends, requires a great deal of energy. So, uh, how is Ty here gonna find all these thunder eggs? Eh, hey, I was just wondering that myself. A reasonable question. I've created... <laughs> yes, uh, well, I'm pretty sure I said Taz eggs. automatically, so that was my fault more than anything. <laughs> just be lying all over the place. Just our luck. A lot of them will have already been found. The trick will be convincing the locals to part with their prized possessions. But I'm afraid I can't help you with that. If 
you're as resourceful as they say, Ty. I'm sure you'll think of something. Righto, Ty. There's no point in mucking about. You've got to find a second boomerang. I'll see you in two up. There we go. Okay. Cutscene's finally over. Kind of cutscene, I guess. It was more just like explaining what was going on more than anything. Can we talk yes. to people? Mm -hmm. Yeah, triangle. Okay. Sure. Make sure you visit all the portals. So it's a little, uh, I don't know, reminding me a little bit of like Spyro or, or I guess like 3D Mario games in that regard with the whole yes, make portals that you're jumping through. You know, Spyro, you jump through portals. And Mario, it's not portals per se, but Mario 64 has you jumping through paintings. That's close enough, right? Sadly, I did not get to do the camping thing. I'm very upset about it, Rue, to be completely honest. But um, the snow I was okay with. They predicted a lot of snow in our area. And that was fine with me, you know. I We had fire. We had a car if things got too bad and whatnot. Was a little worried about getting stuck. But no, uh, we were going to be up in, not like true mountains, but up in the hills. And they were calling for some really bad winds up in the up in the hills and that mixed with all the trees already being weighed down by the snow i uh, i was worried about like a tree coming over on top of us or something they do have shelters up there that we could have went to if things got too bad but we would have had to you know pack up our stuff and and we wouldn't have had the tent to block the wind at that point uh so it would have been just the sleeping bag it would have been a pleasant experience if if it got bad uh, we were going to try to go out the next day because the next day the wind wasn't supposed to be too bad. But we were completely snowed in, like 100% snowed in <laughs> until uh, just yesterday, actually. We might have been able to get out the day before yesterday, but it would have been it would have been tough. So, yeah, sadly, the weather weather stopped those plans. Hopefully here in a, uh, a couple months or something like that, we'll be able to to go out. I mean, I don't think Mr. Noodle's too excited about it, but <laughs> I'm wanting to. I was looking forward to it. I still enjoyed my time off, though. I, I decided to just take those three days chilling, uh, relaxing a little bit, you know. I made a point to not catch up on any work or do anything those three days. I just took it easy, but let's hope so you imagine not either. <laughs> I don't know why she's so against cap capping, camping, but... For some reason, she doesn't really like it. <laughs> That's great. Where is it? See that tree over there? Yeah. Well, it's not there. Why? Why? Why are you even doing that, bird? Like. <laughs> it's on top of Frillnick Peak. Great. You see that tree? Yep. Well, that's not where you're going. Well, thanks. That's very helpful, man. and bite your way there while avoiding Boss Cass's henchmen. Look, mate, life wasn't meant to be easy. <laughs> Wants to go for my birthday. And the only reason I want to go for her birthday is because her birthday is like the next day that I would generally have off. Um, like for more than one or two days in a row. And then, yeah, something tells me the bugs might be a factor. Rue totally called it. There's dirt. I mean, the dirt's not that big of a deal. It's not like you're rolling around in the dirt or anything, right? Like, the dirt's just there, but the dirt's always there. It's outside, love. <laughs> you just gotta get used to the dirt. Talk to Sierra Alistair about doing winter camping. I, that, I, I want to so bad. I wish I was able to take more days off in the next couple of days. Or, I'm sorry, in the next couple of weeks. Because I would still like to do the, the winter thing. But I'm hoping to be able to do, like, uh, spring at least this year you can handle a small amount of bugs you'd be more worried about spiders yeah but i mean like in a campground there's usually not that many spiders outside of daddy long legs but i don't consider those spiders because like they're completely harmless to people and i think technically some daddy long legs aren't spiders anyways i could be wrong i'm not a bug expert but you know you don't like grass I, I don't understand your your hatred of grass, Mr. Noodle. Which was the best place to be given the surprise I got. I wasn't paying attention to the story that he's telling. But if you ask me, Asa's right. That portal did to like send everybody back through time or some shit. You're saying that if I have an accident, I'll end up back at one of these. Oh, he's explaining 
checkpoints. Gotcha. Outside sucks in general, Noodle. I'm with you. <laughs> Y'all are crazy. There's bugs hiding in the grass. They're not that bad. You pique my interest for it, and we will probably get out for some camping in summer. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely going at least once this year. Um, I would prefer it to have been winter. Uh, if I can't do winter, then I'd prefer spring, because I'd rather it be a little chilly than to be hot. But if I can't do either one, then I'm going this summer. Like, it's 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 happening one way or another. If Mr. Noodle doesn't want to go, I'll just go by myself for all I care. Like, <laughs> I didn't notice. This is totally a portal potty, too. Like, <laughs> I wasn't paying much attention when they were talking, but that's totally a portal potty. There's no way around that. You can, you're allergic to grass, you break out in a really itchy rash. I had some problems with, like, cut grass when I was younger, but I, I grew out of it, thankfully. I reckon you could put them to good use by pressing the bite button. <laughs> Get it? Stop us. Bite button. <laughs> Never mind, Ty. Move on. Have a go with those crates. <laughs> oh, this bird, man. It's got, he's got a sense of humor. I don't know if it's a good one, but he's got one. You can't leave me alone here? Well, I mean, you're more than welcome to come with me, of course, but, like, <laughs> if you're gonna refuse to go camping with me, what am I supposed to do? You're not made to be alone? I know you're not. Love camping, it's peaceful, and you love cooking over the fire. Same, man. That's what it is. It's just peaceful to be able to get away from everything and relax. You're jealous, though? You're over there relaxing. You're already dreading the fact that you have an 8 to 10 page research paper for one of your classes. I don't miss college at all, man. <laughs> like, not even a little bit. I, well, okay. I miss it a tiny bit just because, like, I did a in-person, in 100% in-person college. And I I had a couple good friends that I went to college with. So I miss that. And one of my professors, teachers, whatever you want to call her, was really cool. Uh, I really liked her and hanging out with her and talking to her about programming and shit like that. So, like, I miss it from that standpoint, you know? But, like, I don't miss anything else about college. <laughs> I don't miss all of the work. I don't miss the waking up early. Uh, I, the the stress, the money. Oh, man. Because my college was relatively cheap, but still. You know? I don't miss any of that. I think he was holding an interesting drink in the loading screen. I'm very, I, I, I must have missed it completely because <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about, so I must have missed whatever it is. You just say you're really glad it's double spaced. I feel that, man. Thankfully, we didn't have to write very many papers since I, I did just go for uh, advanced software and uh, development was specifically what I went for, software, to be a software developer uh, engineer. And, uh... So, like, we did a lot of stuff on the computer, you know, writing programs and, and making websites and fixing, uh, you know, pre-made programs that were meant to be broke. Uh, and then, like, we we did have to write some papers for, like, computer theory and stuff like that, but there wasn't that many, thankfully. You love cookout food, but it's the out part that bugs me. Oh, you're the worst, Noodle. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Fair stream, you miss junior college. Most going to university sucks. You don't have your friends there. Yeah, I I would have been a lot worse, I think, if it weren't for being able to hang out with with the, a couple people that I really liked there. It's like me and one of my good buddies. We would go from there and then like go to one of the local malls and get coffee and shit like that and just hang out. It was really fun. Now me and him never really get to hang out anymore. Getting old sucks. <laughs> Look like one of those cartoon bottles that had triple X on it or would have triple X on it. Okay, okay. The little tipsy over here, huh? Is <laughs> this major emphasis in cybersecurity? I'm so glad I didn't go for programming. I suck at it. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah, I, I really enjoy it. I, I found that it was a... Uh, it was a great choice for me personally, and I kind of thought it would be. I had begun to learn C++ development before I entered college, and so I already knew that I kind of liked it. Um, and then I, I found a local college, relatively cheap, that 
had classes geared specifically for that, so. I feel like some of this information he's telling us is probably useful, but... <laughs> Should probably pay a little bit of attention to what they're talking about here every once in a while. Once and again. The only regret I actually have about college, outside of all of the debt that I went into for years, is uh, that like I don't really get to use my degree all that often, you know? I use it on my own time, making websites and, and developing video games and, and stuff, but yeah. Seriously, don't ever tell anyone, but on the final we had... I don't know if this is the right place to, to share a secret. It's kind of a <laughs> live broadcast to the world here. <laughs> but, uh, got awful projects, you won't lie. Use your uncle as a resource for the first class. When it came to advanced Java, let's just say the universe reward you for not cheating when someone gave you the chance. I mean, that's good, though, that you, uh, that you resisted temptation, right? Like, as long as you don't give away the college. But fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> Uh, I think you mean, is that college to open, Nate? Nate? No, sadly, it's not. I wish it was, just because the dynamic there was really cool, honestly. Um, like, one of the pre professors, the one that I was talking about, she was really cool with us, because it was small classes, so we all just got up in our cars, and those of us that didn't drive, she just drove us, and we all just took a trip, like, 45 minutes away to get ice cream at a really good ice cream shop one time. Like, <laughs> on her. She paid for it. For, like I said, the classes were small. There was, like, five of us or something like that. Um, and she just bought us ice cream because it was towards the end of our classes and we didn't have any work that we needed to do right then and there. So she just gave us ice cream, man. Like, <laughs> it was awesome. Um, and then, of course, the, the classes were really fun and I, I did learn some stuff. I it, The thing with programming, in my opinion, if that's what people want to go to college for, unless there's, like, a specific reason that you need to go to college for it, I don't really think it's worth it. Um, just because, like, you can learn all of the programming skills that you need online, right? There, there's so many great online courses for programming, uh, be it on, on YouTube or on sites like Skillshare or whatever, you know? So if you're just wanting to learn programming so that you can make games on your own or, um, to make a website or, or like what I do quite often with my programming skills is make tools for, for myself to make my life easier. Um, so for it, cases like that, you know, you can just, you can just totally learn that shit at home for free or, or for low cost on sites like Skillshare and shit. Hashtag not sponsored. Uh, but I mean, if they wanted to, I totally would. <laughs> Not even kidding, the dude did the project for you when you just asked for help setting up a GUI box and uh, looked the way he wanted it to. And you're so tempted but resisted because plagiarism is immediate expulsion here. The university gave you a B on that project. Hey, that's, I mean, hey, a B's great, honestly. Like, there is absolutely nothing wrong with a B, man. Yeah, we, uh, we did Java. That was one of our languages. And I actually really took to Java. I, I made a small game in Java. Um that I was hoping to to develop into a full game someday, but never got around to. It was a Tetris-like game, um, but the guy that I had working on me with it, he kind of dropped out after a while, so I I kind of stopped working on it. I could have finished it up on my own, but I, I just didn't. I, I picked up more hours at my quote-unquote real job and uh, just kind of focused my energy on that instead. But, uh, anyways, yeah, no, that was, like, my language of choice for a long time because it's just so portable, you know? You can use Java on everything. I mean, hell, there's DVD players and shit that run Java. Like, it's crazy. Now, granted, obviously, my game that I wrote wasn't gonna run in Java, but it was still just neat that it would run on Linux, Mac, Windows, and I didn't have to change anything, really, other than, you know, stylize, like, the... the the top bar and, and uh, whatnot to, to fit in with those platforms more, essentially. But, like, for Project, we made a quiz like thing where you counted the dots in 15 seconds and guess how many there were. Our final was we had a actual client that we had to make a website for that was going to be 
put out in the in the world, you know? I, I It's not up anymore as far as I'm aware of, but it was for quite a while. And uh, we had to, you know, work with the client. It, it wasn't a single project, obviously. It was a group project. Um, but yeah, we had to make the, the website and then show it to the client. The client told us what they wanted changed and whatnot. And then rinse repeat until it was all done, the class was over, and then we had to present it, talking about the technologies that we used, uh, how we how we did it, showing off the the code and the website, obviously, stuff like that. It was a it was a pretty fun time. And now, how long has it been since you did Sing Mode? Like, too soon. <laughs> how bad is HTML? You got to take a class on that. I don't think it's all that bad personally. Now, granted, these days you're talking about HTML5, which is something I've never messed around with a whole lot. Um, I, I played around with it a tiny bit, but it's different than what I learned back in the day. You know, back in my day, no. Uh, <laughs> but it, it's not all that bad. It's a markup language, so it's not like you're not programming. You're just creating visual elements through the use of tags. Um, and then along with HTML, you'll probably take classes on CSS, which is how you stylize all of those elements on the web page. Uh, there's, I always preferred in college, I always preferred writing raw HTML, but there are actually a lot of programs out there that will let you design websites within them. And then they just generate the HTML files for you. And then, of course, these days, if you want a website, it's so easy just to load up with something like Squarespace or whatever and do it from there. And that's what my website now is through. It's through Squarespace. I, I thought about writing it from scratch, but then I was like, you know what? It's so much easier to just <laughs> pay Squarespace a little bit more than I would a normal hosting site and let them deal with the making sure it works on mobile, making sure it works on... Uh, desktop and and everything else you know and then all i gotta do is go around customize my theme lay everything out and whatnot so i decided to just end up going with that <laughs> but yeah it, it's not like programming in java at least so if you hated programming in java maybe you'll find html a little bit more reasonable i hope you do at least Speaking of Nate, though, Nate, if you're uh, still around, man, how's your, uh, how's Mass Effect going for you tonight? You were having some trouble with it the other night, I remember. Dying and whatnot. Oh, God, I don't think we can reach that. There looks like there's goodies up there, though, so I want to. I imagine that we probably, like, come back around out this way, though, is what I'm thinking is happening. So we're just going to leave it. I'm not going to spend too much time trying to get up there. Holy crap, it's been almost a half hour already. Time is flying. I'm, I'm enjoying this, by the way. I haven't had much time to talk about the actual game. I've just been kind of mindlessly playing it and chatting with y'all. But, uh, yeah, no, it's actually, it's really good. It controls really well. The only things that I don't like so far is whenever you're running one direction and then turn around, sometimes he does this slide thing, which whenever you're on, like, platforms and things like that can be a little awkward because you could, like, obviously just end up sliding right off of it. But other than that, I, I, it's going really well. Oh, and I wish that I could invert the way that we turn whenever we press buttons, because <laughs> I'm weird and I like doing things the other way around. Dude, Tasmanian Tiger's not really swimming in real life or something, because he looks awkward as hell trying to swim around in there. Thank heck. Honestly, I have no idea what you're going to do after you graduate, though. Professor says he doesn't think you need to worry much since you're a CIS major, a Homeland Security minor, and you have help desk experience. We usually have no idea what I'm going to do. Yeah, that was one problem with mine. Like, because I went specifically for software engineering, my only real choices were, you know, get a job that's not directly related to my field, do freelance work, or work for one single company in town, you know, other than moving. I, I could have moved, and I did have a couple job offers if I had moved. Um, but I was in a budding relationship with a little someone called Mr. Noodle at the time. I didn't have my driver's license. And I couldn't drive at the time. I was just out of... I was 18 when I finished college, so I was pretty young. Um, I just wasn't ready to, to move, you know, hours away at that time. So I, I didn't have very many job opportunities. I started when I was 17, and it was an accelerated course. Instead of the average 12 
hours a week, I did 40 hours a week. Um, and then finished in one year. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so I, I did end up working for the one company in town that, that did programming stuff. And we made web applications. So not websites, but websites that ran actual code. Um, some on the client side, but mostly on a server side thing. And then, you know, like what you see now, where you have like Google Docs, for instance, that's a whole application that traditionally you would have downloaded to your desktop, but now you can run it on a website. I built stuff like that, essentially, for, for a company. Um, but sadly, they were in a really tough spot. Their contracts had ran up, and they were trying to get more, but the they weren't they were slow coming basically uh so by the time i got in there the company didn't have much time left uh so i ended up doing the freelance thing for a little while and i did make some money off of it that was pretty decent but it wasn't consistent at all and uh once mr noodle moved in with me i had to make sure that i was making a consistent income um so once that job kind of ended and it was obvious that i wasn't gonna make enough consistent income to keep a roof over both of our heads and you know pay for food and all the other necessities i ended up getting a shitty job at mcdonald's and you know you're here good so far on break from sorting magic while you sh watch stream oh you're sorting your magic cards too or do you mean like oh no there's no magic in and mass effect so <laughs> i'm guessing you're talking magic cards right <laughs> Never played a Mass Effect game, but you want to? I've played most of the first one, but I never ended up finishing it. I've talked about it on stream before, but uh, I was moving at the time. This is actually right around the time that I got a shitty job at McDonald's. Um, I was moving to somewhere cheaper to live, and during that time, I figured I would clean out my computer so that whenever I moved, because I knew I wasn't going to have internet access, I could have as many games downloaded and ready to go as possible and whatnot. And uh, in doing so, I wiped my computer. And I thought that Steam would automatically save my, well, my game save, you know? It didn't. Uh, so I lost all of my progress. And I can't blame Steam. It it's my fault. I should have looked up and seen if that was on the list of games that does that or not. But yeah. Long story short, I was clear at the the end end of the game, and didn't get a and lost my save. Never got to finish it, so it left a sour taste on my mouth, and I never went back and played the game again. But now that the legendary collection is out, as I really want to. How in the heck does that work? Oh, you mean the the going to to college when uh for forty hours a week? Yeah, so it's called an accelerated course. Um, we went in at eight o'clock in the morning, took. What was it? Two classes that were two hours each, had a lunch break, and then two more classes that were two hours each, and then uh, that got us out at five o'clock. So worked. Uh, it was basically an eight to five, you know, kind of like what a lot of people do for their jobs. And yeah, we just we got those hours in quick, <laughs> real quick. And it was a lot, but I didn't have a normal job at the time, so like it was fine for me to do that. Um, and it meant that I, I got the equivalent of, you know, four years of college almost. I, I think technically it was a two-year degree with extra credits is, is the equivalent because it was a trade school. But I think that was the, the equivalent of what I, I got. It may have been a four-year equivalent. I don't remember. But yeah. And then if I wanted to, I could have taken them credits and, and gone to a... a bigger, more well-known college and uh, got like an actual degree or, or continued on for, for whatever. My professor wanted me to get a doctorate, but I decided it wasn't worth it for me. Because um, like doctorate's only really worth it if you're going to be coming a professor or something like that in, in computer sciences or if you're working a lot in like theory or whatever. And that's not what I had planned with my life. Although it would have been really fun to go around telling everybody I was a doctor when <laughs> in reality I was just, you know, technically a doctor. It's technically true, but just had a uh, doctor in computer sciences. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Doctorates only work for professors and actual doctors, essentially. Yep. I mean, there's the, the people that do, you know, the, the low-level research stuff and, and develop 
programming languages and hardware and stuff like that um, that having a doctorate can be helpful for, but for the most part, it's still useless. Like, you can just have your PhD or whatever and still get into that sort of stuff just fine. Oof, dude, that hurts. Now all of a sudden you want to play Dragon Age? Well, the first two, Inquisition is weird as heck, and you still don't know what I'm doing in it. <laughs> I need to play those again, man. It's a similar story with Dragon Age. Um, where I, I don't remember in that one, though, if I lost my save or if it was because I was playing with mods and then, like, one of the mods broke or something. And then whenever I went to play it again, I don't remember what happened with Dragon Age. But for some reason, I, I never finished my playthrough of Dragon Age either. But I was having a lot of fun with it, the first one, whenever I played it. And Inquisition, is that the, the newest one for Dragon Age? Because if it is, I mean, I've never played it, but I remember watching some people play it on, on YouTube back in the day. Not a whole lot, because I didn't want to spoil it for me, but just a little bit the first couple hours or whatever. And thinking that it looked pretty fun. But again, I don't think I ever actually played it. Or I know I've never actually played it. It is the newest one? Okay. Like I said, I thought so, but it wasn't 100% positive. There's one other thing I could show you, but I don't know if you're ready for it. Oh, I'm ready, bud. Yeah. Give it to me. Well, what's that? Well, a mate of mine who knows a mate who knows a mate who knows another mate says you can use two boomerangs to glide long distance. What? No way. That's impossible. You can't do that. Simple, really. You jump, then press and hold jump again to start gliding. Right? Jump, press X, jump again to start gliding. Okay. Safe Hi. as houses, mate. Safe as houses. I mean, <laughs> look, <laughs> I don't know much about Australia, which is what I'm assuming they're they're basing all this off of. But is safe at houses a, a real term? Like, <laughs> that feels fake to me. Also, I was thinking he was going to, like, twirl them like a uh, like a helicopter blade or something like that. No, he just puts them out like miniature wings. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> Inquisition is, yeah, you did too, but the whole system was so weird to play after the first two. Hopefully you got a mod that fixes bugs. Your PS3 version still shows you the inside of faces when you go to the Temple of Haven. Oh no. <laughs> Are we dead if we fall down here? No. Okay. It doesn't look like there's anything down there either. It's fun. You did... It's fun. They did do a big change in play style, but you found it to be nice. It looked kind of like an MMO. Right? Inquisition? The way they had like the hot bar down bottom and everything and then it was like a bunch of fest quetch and fetch quests and whatnot there in the beginning of the game and all that shit. Just as well I didn't call for an ambulance. <laughs> well lad, you made it through with flying colors. And as a little extra bonus, a stopwatch will appear. Oh, so we can do time trials on, on courses? That's always fun, I guess. I almost never end up doing them, but it's a nice thing for people that are really into a game and want to do it again or whatever. Oh, we might have to then if we need more thunder eggs. Gas bagging? I'm going to have to start remembering some of these terms and start using them, man. Safe as a house and gas bagging. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> this is so weird. Honestly, my biggest complaint is the crafting. You like having preset armors to choose from. We still have no idea what armor is best for what people. Not to mention gathering materials can really suck. See, those bows sound very MMO-esque, which again, I was I was into. So I might actually like that sort of thing. <laughs> uh, Did we get the Thunder Egg or like, can we not go into? I'm confused. I thought we had to like go into this area here. Yeah, okay. At the local water and hole reckons that if you stand in the middle of them, something weird will happen. Are they magic mushrooms? Is that why? Okay, I see like some green mist here. Oh. Okay, a stopwatch suddenly appeared, but. To the track. Wait, what? Oh, did we teleport? The chip, but miss one. Good. Oh, shit. Okay, I didn't realize we like were teleporting. Holy crap. All right. <laughs> I guess we I guess we're speed running now. <laughs> Did y'all know that I used to do speed runs? I think I mentioned it before. I was never particularly good at any game, but like I had some decent times. I think one of my YouTube channels still has a old uh Super Mario Brothers 3 speed run that I did. It's not it wasn't very optimized or anything, but it was it was on the leaderboard at least. 
So like it wasn't terrible. That was a ripper of a race tie. You're faster than a long legged emu with a case. To me it was more like Dragon Age clashed with Skyrim. I I love Skyrim, everyone knows that, so <laughs> Never thought of it that way. Besides, it did finally let you romance Colin, which I wanted since game one. They just had to give him so much trauma first, I guess. See, I don't know who any of these characters are, man. I'll play, like I said, I'm going to play all of those things one of these days. I, uh, I mentioned it a day or two ago on stream, but I signed up for a service that helps keep track of all of your, like, backlog games and whatnot. It's called Backlog. And I say signed up. It's a free service, so it's not like I, I signed up for it, per se. I just, uh joined a website i guess anyways point is it helps keep track of all of that stuff like games that you want to play but haven't played or that are on your black backlog or whatever i need to get all of my steam games on there because i definitely do want to play a lot of those games like dragon age for instance and whatnot and i need to get them on the list so i don't end up forgetting them so i'm gonna i'm gonna try to get through my backlog at some point I have freaking, I don't know if I've ever met, said on stream, but I have like 1,400 games or something like that on Steam. It's just entirely too many, honestly. Um, but I want to at least try them all so that I know like what I like and what I don't like and whatnot. Because right now, like 90% of my Steam library, I don't even know what the hell the games are at this point. Like, <laughs> or if they're anything that I'm actually going to enjoy playing or whatever. So I'm hoping that service will help me out with that sort of thing. But Colin is a Templar and you adore him. They made him have a crush on a female mage in the first game and then didn't give us the guy to romance. What? That's crazy, man. <laughs> Need to give a playthrough, honestly. It's one of the ones you put at front list for your off time games. Yeah, I mean, I definitely want to. Right now, I'm just uh, playing a few other games on my off time, but I definitely, it's it's on the list, don't worry. Um, but I need to finish, I've been trying to finish Final Fantasy VIII. I've been replaying Final Fantasy VII, uh, the remake, because I never officially finished it on the, PS, uh, on the PS4. So I've been replaying that a bit. And then I think I'm going to end up doing God of War here real soon because I, I love God of War and I, I haven't beat the new one of that either. But yeah, it's up there. The problem with like my off time games, most of them are RPGs because I love RPG games and they're long. You know, they just take freaking forever to get through, which is something, you know, I like. But at the same time, it also means that playing one game takes weeks so it just takes forever to get through them. Hey, Mr. Noodle, thank you for the five-bit cheer, love. Appreciate it. I wish the emotes were working on stream. I don't know why they broke all of a sudden. Maybe it's just the animated ones or something that don't pop up. Or, I don't know, Streamlabs is dumb too, though, so who knows. Also, we've been going for like 45 minutes, so we're gonna, we're gonna hop off to take a break real quick. I'm still gonna just sit here and BS with you guys. But we are going to go to the ad break for just a minute or two. Uh, don't worry, you won't miss any gameplay or anything like that if you don't have a uh, good ad block or you're not subscribed or whatever. But yeah, we'll be right back. Kind of. For people that have <laughs> subscriptions, I mean, I'm not going anywhere, I guess. But <laughs> See, that's a series needed to get around to playing Final Fantasy. Yeah, man, I, I adore them. They are some of my favorites. The Pixel Remasters got a lot of slack, but I actually really like it, the Pixel Remasters. So for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, I, I highly suggest them. It's an excellent way to get into the series and play those original games in a way that's not super annoying in the modern day, as well as just get some, you know, nice quality of life and graphic improvements and whatnot. You mean Dragon Age plays into that perfectly? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the, <laughs> And I know, it's the type of game that I adore. Um, the problem is just that, again, it's going to take <laughs> weeks to finish it, which is a, a giant pain in the ass. But, but yeah, I loved the time that I spent with Dragon Age, though, so I definitely do want to go back to it. I just haven't had the time. Origins isn't super long, nor is Dragon Age 2, depending how much you get into the side quest. That's another thing that I have trouble with traditionally, is I'm a bit of a completionist. 
I'm actively trying not to be in my Final Fantasy VIII playthrough that I'm doing. Um, I've had to consciously stop myself from looking up guides to get all of the secrets and make sure I'm not missing anything and whatnot. Because that's just how I normally play games. <laughs> I'm really bad about that sort of thing. That's why I've only ever beat two Bethesda games. Because I, I just can't. Man, I have such a hard time ignoring side quests and, and not just spend hours searching around an area for like a single chest or whatever <laughs> like <laughs> and the dlcs don't forget get those but the dlcs are so good for do all of them have dlcs or is it just like the second and third one or it's one of the ones you never own only got to play it here and there you mean heck you adore show and you love finding dad's will and da2 DLCs for Origins are the best. Speaking of Dragon Age, they have a tabletop game you want to give it a try? That would be pretty sick, man. Tabletop Dragon Age. I'd be curious how that works. Like, how the they actually go about that. Is it... I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I saw somebody was showing me that there is... I don't remember if it was Mr. Noodle or if it was someone else. But that there's, like, a tabletop like board game D&D &D is a thing apparently. I would love to give that a try someday. That sounds interesting to me. So it may have been Mr. Noodle, but it may have been someone else. I don't remember. They all have D- Oh, really? Okay. So all of them do. I don't know if there's any reason for us to be going over here, but I mean, I don't see any reason not to go over here right now either though, right? <laughs> Ah, uh, get up on the damn thing. I mean, I guess there's one reason not to go up here, so we can get farther into the game. Which, I mean, is exactly what I was saying. I have such a hard time not just <laughs> doing stupid stuff and exploring. Staying on, on task and completing whatever I'm supposed to be doing. I just, I can't do it, man. I see a big open world in front of me, and I have to explore it. It was a big problem for me in uh, Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep 2 the first time that I played through it. Because I ended up sequence breaking the game a little bit. Because I would just keep messing around and using all of the, the attacks as movement uh, tech. And it, it led to me getting to areas earlier than I should have. <laughs> Which, I mean, <laughs> got a little bit confusing at times whenever I'd be somewhere and be like, Wait a second, why can't I do the thing that I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to be doing here. <laughs> oh yeah, it's probably because I totally got up that cliff that I probably shouldn't have been able to a half hour ago or whatever. Like, <laughs> You watched part of a playthrough looked really good. Yeah, you plan on buying one of the D&D board games actually? Dude, if you do, let me know. I'm totally down, like I said, to give it a try. It's I'm not 100% sure how they work, but they sound neat nonetheless. I'm assuming at some point we'll get the ability to swim, because there is stuff down there. Like an extra life for Ty here or something like that. So I imagine we'll be coming back to this area at some point. I watched a little bit of a... I think it was Did You Know Gaming was talking about it. I don't remember, but they were talking about Hollow Knight. And uh, I, I really like Metroid-esque games and now that i've watched that little documentary on it or whatever that they did not documentary i guess but just it talked about it and and uh got developer comments and shit on it anyways uh i really want to give that game a try at some point now as well i was down at the local watering hole last night and this bloke was bragging about how he could throw a boomerang better than anyone else oh yeah where is he at man i'll show him up right now view button you can get a rang's eye view of your target rang's eye got me thinking would that really work what the hell's a rang's eye them's fighting words well, uh, <laughs> we'll both line up back to back, take five steps, and on the uh, on the sound of the gun, man, we turn around and throw a boomerang at each other. Gotta, <laughs> gotta have a good old-fashioned showdown here. See who's the best boomerang slinger in the South or whatever. What is this? Why are we suddenly a giant beast? What? <laughs> he growls. 
Okay, but we can't but we can't throw our boomerang. So how do we how do we stop? Do we go over it again? Triangle, circle, square. Okay, it's just on a timer. Okay. <laughs> that was that was weird. Okay, it looks like we can't hit these from over here, so we probably need to go like over here somewhere. Also, wasn't there like a crocodile or alligator or something in here? Should probably be careful of that. Yeah, he's all the way over there though. Should have should have killed him before we uh started this up. Oh my lord. I'm so bad with a joystick. I don't know. I don't actually know if we can do that right now. Or no, we just had to hit it the once. Okay, so that's that's all we had to do. That was super easy, man. I thought we had to hit them like all at the same time or something like that. Next question though, can we jump that high? We can jump pretty high, but oh, okay. That looked scarier than it than it was. That wasn't a half bad effort, Ty. I reckon with a little more practice, you'll get Well, do you, man, you really want to have, like, a board game day one of these days? You have a big enough dining room and table for it? So, I mean, that's what I've been talking about for a while, man. I would love to do that sort of stuff. Get together and do gaming competitions, play board games, cards, whatever. All kinds of stuff I would love to do, but... Time and, and whatnot is just a little rough. I do have a large enough table for it. I would just have to clear out space to put the, the extra piece into it. Because it's like one of those dining tables where the the middle of it comes out so you can use it as like a smaller table or a bigger one but gee i wonder how i mean it's not like the double jump is a common thing <laughs> i want to murder you before i go back over there because if i try to go over there i'm probably gonna die with you running around are you dead yeah i think you're dead technically we don't have a double jump at least not yet And I don't think that beast-looking thing could jump, could it? Unless I missed it. So I don't think uh, I don't think that's gonna do it for us. Oh lord! I like the little uh, like the little extras on the animation, like him using the boomerangs to pick things up, or to to, to pull himself up. I guess is what I was trying to say. Stuff like that. Like that's really cute, man. Collect three hundred opals. Find five. Bilbies. <laughs> Time attack, glide the gap, rang the frills, rock jump, super jump. So we got all of them, but we're missing two cog wheels and five of the 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 energy things, opals. Where did we miss them at, I wonder? The inner completionist is telling me we can't leave this love level until we freaking find all this shit. And I should just go. <laughs> but I mean, I guess that's a good sign, right? I'm not hating the game so much that I just want to get out of here. I'm enjoying it enough that I want to keep playing. Uh, I wonder if they're like underwater over here or whatever. And we can't swim yet. Oh no, it looks like it's only... Oh no, yeah, that totally looks like it goes into another area. What do we got? We got a map here. Yeah, that totally looks like it goes back in there somewhere. Shoot, man. So we probably will just have to come back to this level later. I can't wait until we get a swimming upgrade or something because this dude swimming is terrible. Like, <laughs> that's a literal doggy paddle there, man. Not even a good one. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. We're just going to go. We're going to go and we're going to go into the next area. If we can figure out which way we're going, I think it's this way. Yeah, yeah, up the, up the weird hill. You got lucky your grandma and pap gave us theirs. Oh, gave us theirs. Okay. It sits like eight or something comfortably. Holy shit, man. Yeah, that's pretty big. Mine would sit as it is. It would sit like four-ish comfortably. You could get six on there. Um, if we put the middle piece in, it would fit six comfortably probably. Eight uh, would be stretching it, but I, I think you could do if you really wanted to. All right, well, I'm just gonna... I, I still don't know really what to do with that thing that's in the, the middle of the the area there, but I'm just gonna leave it. It has two leaves. Ours only has one, I think. No, ours did have two, didn't it? It might fit eight, actually. I don't know. I've never used it, like, fully set up, because... Yeah, why would I? I don't have that much room. In my kitchen, at least. Oh, 
I mean, maybe that's just how ostriches look in Australia, man. I don't know. <laughs> Although, I'm not 100% positive I've ever seen an ostrich in real life. I've seen an emu before, which are ostrich-like. I've probably seen ostriches at, like, a, uh, like, not a zoo, but, like, one of the drive through animal parks or something like that. But I'm not 100% positive, though. But I've seen a lot of emu. Somebody, uh near where I grew up actually raised some emu and yeah you have an IRL but you've seen videos yeah I mean isn't an ostrich and an emu essentially the same thing though as far as I'm aware they are oh, you little ripper Ty you found a fair dinkum rainbow scale when you find enough take them to the bunyip elder at rainbow cliffs bunyip elder okay I will keep that in mind See, we have a, a couple different zoos that are within driving distance than us, Rue. One of them I refuse to go to 99% of the time. And it sucks because it's the better zoo. I just hate driving to it. Um, the other one's not so bad, though. Uh, the only problem with it is, is it's on the smaller side. And it's it's a lot farther away. But <laughs> you wouldn't have been able to afford it. You know that much, said Nate. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much like our table would have cost if we had just bought it. We got given it some reason. I don't really remember why, but. You want to ride the carousel again? The last couple of times that we've gone to the zoo, I don't know if we just went on the, the big, the wrong day or what, but like all the rides were closed, basically. I, I think it's a mix of COVID regulations and just going on the wrong day, though. We're going to the zoo. There's Mr. Noodle. <laughs> she loves any of the animal stuff. Zoos, drive through safaris, all that shit. That's what she's 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 here for, man. <laughs> oh, the one with the big aquarium? Yeah, that's the one that I hate going to just because I don't like driving up there. But uh, there there's a couple other ones, actually, that we haven't been to at all. One other one that I have been to, and it's it's pretty decent. It's just small. That's the only downside of it. Oh, and I mean, it's far away. It takes a couple hours to, to drive to it. I guess that's a downside too, but you know. You don't you don't grow up in a small town expecting not to ever have to drive for hours. <laughs> you do has the ski lift things that you can take to drive to the, or to get to the bottom. That's pretty sick. I've, have I ever been on it? I don't, I don't remember if I've ever been on a ski lift or not. I've gone, like, tubing and snowboarding before. Well, like, to a tubing and snowboarding skiing resort. I didn't get to do snowboarding because the people I was there with just wanted to do the tubing. Um, and they didn't know how to snowboard, and I'm not particularly good at it anyways. But I can't remember if we took lifts up or if we had to walk up the hill. It's a pretty big hill, so I imagine we probably took lifts, but I honestly don't remember. Where's that, Rex? It's a nice little spot, not too far from Shark Reef. Yeah, and? Well, anyway, she's an excellent swimmer, but she hasn't come home yet. I'm starting Wait, what? Ah, oh, we finally gonna learn how to swim? Is that what they're talking about? Well, I'm on I hope so. Duty, so. Could you have a look for me? If you well, teach me how to swim. Mate, I, I can't swim. Exactly. Tell yep. What? I'll teach you. Yes. Follow me. Let's go, man. When you're in water, press the bite button to dive. Then tap the jump button to start swimming. Okay. okay. Dive, swim. Right. Got it. We can By do this. Way, those boomerangs of yours won't work underwater. That's okay. But I got a prezi for you that'll fix you haven't been that. to the one in Denver for ages. Last time you went, your dad was trying to get back in your life before he you fucked up again. That. Sorry to hear that, man. Uh, me and my dad don't have a relationship like at all, so I, I feel I feel the pain there. <laughs> me too, noodle and fiance absolutely loves them. We need to go to some of the sanctuaries. You have a note in your phone of them. Yeah, we do. And we will, most likely. Those are a nice thing, too, that, to do just for, like, a, like a, a mini trip or something like that. I mean, it's nice, though. Honestly, we have the perks of small town driving in our everyday life, and we get to multiple city centers within hours. Yeah, I mean, you're not completely wrong. It just... I also hate driving in cities. <laughs> so, I mean... Like, if I lived in a city, I probably just wouldn't have a car. I was against getting a car for a long time living in a small town, even. I was just gonna 
drive or drive just walk or take public transport or whatever was uh was my main plan for a long time <laughs> last time you heard yours was in prison again and apparently he worships Odin, so he kind of ruined Norse myth for you. What? Like, <laughs> like not sarcastically, just like legit. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's no worse than any other religion, right? Like, <laughs> I don't, <laughs> I don't get it, man. I don't know. Oh lord. Yeah, mine is a. Uh, mine's doing fine, as far as I know. I've never, well, I mean, I can't say never. I talked to him once when I was really young. Um, and one of my cousins, his uh, his dad actually works for him. So I know he's doing decent enough. And uh, yep, that's, that's all I really know about him. Because <laughs> don't talk to him at all. You love hate city driving, depends on the city. I hate it, it just all the time. I'm not a huge driving person in general anyways, though, you know? I don't really even care for driving in our small town with basically no traffic. Wait, can we push these around? Did I, did I just push that? No, I must be, I must be seeing things. Oh no, no, no! It definitely is it moving or are we like glitching through it? I'm so confused on what's happening there. You're already a pagan. You love learning different mythologies, but he soured it for me because you already have a negative notion of him, and then he goes that route, <laughs> ruined it totally. Yeah, <laughs> I can see. I can see where you're coming from. I uh, if I had to pick a religion, it would probably be uh, I almost said paleontologist. Uh, <laughs> there we go. That's canon now. We're just gonna we're just gonna leave it at that. <laughs> I'm a paleontologist apparently. <laughs> There's a reason you take bus or get rides. You refuse to learn to drive. Yeah, I mean it comes in handy definitely, and we've been able to. Myself and Mr. Noodle have been able to go on like nicer dates and stuff now since we drive, which is nice. Um, and then being able to like easily get fast food or whatever, things like that make it nice. But for the most part, if there was better public transportation where I lived, I probably still wouldn't be, be driving. Um, but Mr. Noodle can't drive, so I would have had to probably get my license sooner or later to make sure that she can get to like doctor's appointments and shit, so... I guess it was only a matter of time. Oh, we have an air meter. Okay, I wasn't really paying attention to that. Good enough. Love driving, it's peaceful to you normally, especially once it hits nighttime. Yeah, and that's how it seems uh, for a lot of people. I mean, a lot of people talk about, you know, whenever they're having a bad day or whatever, just driving around, listening to music, chilling, or, or hanging out, or whatever, and I just, that's not me, man. Growing up, me and one of my cousins would ride around a lot, but he did the driving. <laughs> like, I don't have a problem being in a car. I just, I don't care for the driving aspect of it. It doesn't do anything for me. I don't, I don't understand the appeal, I guess. Nighttime is the worst. I mean, if I have to drive, I would prefer it to be probably daylight. Like, I like nighttime driving because there's less people, but... It's also harder to see the road, especially if it's raining at night. Because the road gets all shiny and any other cars that are driving by just like ruin the lines and whatnot. It's a pain in the ass, but... So I do I do appreciate there being a lot less people on the road, though, because that's less people I gotta deal with. Hey Ty, you can swim faster by tapping the jump button to gain speed. <laughs> Let's go find out. You actually like the bus, you get two hours all to yourself, and it's rather relaxing at nighttime because there aren't too many people. That's kind of how I feel about the, uh, about trains, man. We don't have passenger trains in our town, sadly. I wish we did. But I've taken a train ride to Florida before, and I, I loved it. Um, the only downside whenever I took the, the trip to Florida was we didn't have a night car. We just had regular seats for the entire trip. And it was like a, a day and a half trip or something like that by train. So so we did have to, you know, sleep in our seats for it. And that part wasn't amazing, but it wasn't the worst either, to be honest with you. I'm hoping to one of these days go on a uh, a trip, a train trip, just for the train ride, honestly. 
And it's for that same sort of reason, you know? You just get time to yourself to relax and look at the views as you're driving past and whatnot. Like, I'm into that sort of stuff. I don't know. Is that thing supposed to be a platypus? What is it? I have no idea. It's probably a platypus, but you, I... I <laughs> you're asking the wrong person, love. <laughs> okay, that fish doesn't look friendly. But it doesn't seem to be trying to kill us either, so I don't I don't know. You took a night flight and being in a passenger seat sucks for sleeping. You sleep on your side and you just don't trust people. Yeah, yeah, I feel it, man. I mean, it got the job done. We got to Florida and we got some amazing views on the on the way down there. But yeah, spending the night in the in the passenger seat sucked. Also, did they really have to have, like, a water level for their second level here in the game? That's, uh, so far, that's the first negative point. Or, I guess, second, because of the, the sliding. <laughs> like, water levels just suck in video games, man. No game needs them. Oh, my lord. How do I get out of here? Here we go. What? Come on, I can totally walk on that bit. What was that? Wasn't there something... Yeah, there is something there in the water. What are you? Are you a bad guy? No, you're like a scuba diver or something. Can I talk to you? I don't know. Seems like I should be able to talk to you or something, but I didn't see anything popping up. Something about the empty streets music and some speed, and it's almost like meditation for me. It puts you in the right mindset. Yeah, and again, it seems like a lot of people are that way, so I wouldn't say you're alone in that. It's just not for me, though. You know? I've never uh, been in a bad mood and been like, you know what I want to do? I want to go drive my car around. I understand why people do, but never had that feeling before. Now, again, though, I have been uh, having bad nights back when I used to hang out with one of my cousins all the time. And I've, like, called him up and been like, hey, man, do you want to just drive around for a bit and chill or whatever? Like, I I've definitely done stuff like that before. Riding around in a car can be pleasant, but, yeah, I don't really care for the driving aspect of it, though. Night has always been your favorite time of day. Noodle driving, walking, didn't matter. Just love being under the moon. That I do 100% agree with, but she has night blindness, so... <laughs> can't really, uh, can't really fault her for not being into the dark, into the nighttime. <laughs> oh, shit. What the hell? Uh, where's that first platform at? There it is. I... Ugh. All right, and then this one. Nope, okay. The camera keeps, like, turning on its own. I think it's because it's getting stuck on these platforms, but it's really screwing up my sense of direction here. <laughs> I don't know if it's, like, getting stuck on these platforms, or if I think it's trying to tell me where to go, but it was making me think that this platform was the third platform because the way it kept adjusting itself. But I, I guess technically it was pointing to, you know, where we were supposed to be going. Can't see her and there's some major weirdos at night. My outlook on that thing is that there's major weirdos all the time. Like, it doesn't really matter at night, during the day, or whatever. It's just people are always going to be weird. So, <laughs> I don't I don't personally think there's much of a difference of weirdos at night versus weirdos in the day and whatnot. Okay, I had to concentrate for a second. That's why I was being quiet. Them jumps, man. I have trouble, uh, I don't know, estimating depth in some 3D platforming games. I think it has to do with the shadows. Like, one of the things I remember in, in Mario reading, one of the things they did was they put a shadow under Mario, uh, or under everything in Mario, and instead of using a realistic shadow, they did a circular dot underneath of it. Because it helps you figure out where you're at at all times, even when you're in the air. So even though, like, a real shadow would be, you know, at an angle, a distance away from you, they still just did the, the old school unrealistic shadows because it was easier to kind of tell where you're at. And helped you helped you with your jump. So you can see here, like as we're jumping up, the shadow's getting farther and farther away from us. And that is technically how shadows should work. But if they didn't do that, if they would have just had it be a little circle underneath of us at all times, I think that would have actually been better from a gameplay perspective. 
there is, but you've just had some experiences at night. Yeah, I guess. Live in Colorado, everyone here is weird. <laughs> uh, but it's the worst in the homeless communities because they spend all their money on that stink the state league lies. <laughs> uh, yeah, I get that fully. It's not much of a bad mood thing for me. It's just getting in the right set where uh, I just got hit by something. It was like an electric eel or something. I don't know. But obviously we need to get a little bit uh, out of that area. Uh, getting the right set, funnily enough, being alone in the car just kind of helps with thinking of others and going ons around me. Get that new to your fiance the same way because I'm experienced and also has trouble seeing at night. Yeah, and I mean, if I had night blindness like Noodle was, I imagine I wouldn't like the night very much regardless of the weirdos. But I don't, thankfully. So I don't have to worry about that personally, you know? <laughs> yeah so i definitely like that first level much more than i'm liking this one i'm glad we got the the swimming ability now so we can swim faster in the water as well as go underwater but i would prefer to just spend as much time on land as possible here because i don't care what game it is water levels suck man zelda mario ty doesn't matter keep us out of the water oh no and then uh like sonic i just remembered sonic water levels man those are the actual worst because of the the limited breath that you had in sonic games 2d sonic games compared to 2d mario games where you just had unlimited underwater breathing oh that was by far the worst part of uh 2d sonic games were we supposed to do something with those buoys? I don't actually remember. It has like this here, doesn't it? Collect 300 opals, find those things, race wrecks, find Ellie, Aurora's kids, quicksand coconut, shipwreck, and nest egg. I don't know what, like, what any of them are, but we have a map. So we missed something to the left over here. Wait. Yeah, like over there. What did we miss over there? Oh. What is that? You can't really see it too well, but off in the distance there. Yeah, there's like a whole bunch of platforms in the sky. How the hell do we get up there? Oh, good lord. If I had the blindness too, you would <laughs> never survive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that would be bad. That'd be bad all around for sure. <laughs> Let's be glad we don't both have night blindness. No, you feel kind of bad saying that about the homeless because some of them are really nice. You had an argument with your folks once and they stayed at the loaves and fishes. One of them ran from the cops, but the others were super nice. You felt bad for the mother and daughter. The way I always look at like homelessness is we're all kind of one mistake, one bad decision, or even just one circumstance out of our control from being in the same situation, you know? Like, it's, it's perfectly feasible that... I could end up being homeless, you know, if uh, if I didn't have the support structure that I have with my family. Like, I, I'm in good relation. Hey, Mr. Noodle, thank you for the five bitch here. I have good relationship with my with my mother um, and and a good enough relationship with my sister and my brothers and whatnot that if anything were to happen, I'm confident that I would have somewhere to go. But I realize that I'm lucky in that regard, you know? There's a lot of people out there that don't have good relationships with their, their mothers, brothers, fathers, sisters, whatever. And uh, if they were to suddenly lose their job, they could just be out of a home. You know, they would have nowhere to go. And I, I feel for them. That sucks, man. So, I try to have empathy towards them for that reason, you know? Because I realize that... Uh, for a lot of them, it's not necessarily their fault. Now, obviously, there are bad ones in the bunch that just refuse to, to, to work or maybe just don't want to have a normal life in a home and everything. Which, I, I mean, I don't understand. I understand they're not wanting to work. <laughs> but I, I, I like having my own home, my own place to live. I couldn't imagine willingly giving that up. Unless, like, uh, I don't know, there was, like, a medical reason or something that I had to. Oh, God, I really don't like the swimming mechanics here, either. Okay, so... Are the eels actually gonna try to get us? No, they just kinda... They're just chilling, man. 
Ain't no big deal. I think the buoys are actually here to kind of try to guide us towards the right direction or whatever. Kind of like the arrows on the different levels. According to your mother, we're not married, so we can't live under the same roof together. But she would take one of us in. I remember that, when that was a thing. I mean, yeah, I don't know if she would now or not, but... I mean, it's kind of dumb, because we've been living under the same roof for, what, 10 years almost? <laughs> like, so... Like, okay, you don't have to take us in if you don't want to, but, uh... <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah. Like, we're gonna be under the same roof either way, so... Okay, look. Shark boy. Oh my lord. I hate underwater levels and I hate sharks. The daughter was really young too. I don't know their situation, but knowing that the mom felt like that was the best place for them makes me worry. I'm grateful that you have friends that you can rely on. If anything ever did happen, you can move out of state or move back to your old college town. Honestly, you think that's why you always want to be nice to them? You'd rather be nice and give them the benefit of the doubt. Right, yeah, and that's that's exactly what I was saying, you know? Like, the mother thinking that was the best place for them, I would worry about that, too. It, it doesn't... There's ob there, there's something wrong there, I feel like, you know? But, yeah, it, it, you never know what somebody else is going through. Just in general, and that's why I, I like the philosophy of just be kind in general, you know? Because, like, you never know what anybody else is going through, man. Like, I I was never mean to this person, but there was a lady at work that I didn't really get along with and used to get on my nerves all the time because she just, like, she would take so much extra time on her lunches and it would take her forever to come back and, and do her job. And when she was there, she just, like, was so slow to do anything or would just ignore people all the time and whatnot. And it really got on my nerves. And then one day, she stopped showing up for work, and uh, it turns out that she had gotten a cancer diagnosis. I don't know if she had known this at the time, or if she was, like, not feeling well because of it, and that's why she did the, you know, all the stuff she did, or if she was just lazy. I have no idea. But it kind of made me feel bad, you know? And I'm, I'm glad that I was never mean to her about it, because then I would have really felt horrible. But even just, you know, thinking in my head, like, oh my gosh, this lady is so lazy... I kind of feel like a jerk now, because, like, <laughs> like was she... Maybe she had a, a, a good legitimate reason for taking so much extra time on her breaks all the time, or uh, her lunches all the time. Maybe she had a good reason for ignoring customers and, and being really slow to complete tasks. You know, I have no idea. You got the same thing from your mother, Nate? Oh, your mother's husband while he's living in the house. That was supposed to be mine. <laughs> like, how does that even work? Like, <laughs> a house that's supposed to be yours and they want to complain about it? That's so dumb. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, Lord. She's slowly changing, very slowly. Yeah, I mean, whatever. I don't really. I, uh... Mr. Noodle's mother isn't a bad lady, but I, I don't. You know. <laughs> We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Still common law in your state. You think it's like two years to be considered that, but hey, at least she's changing. Yeah, I mean, I don't think our state recognizes commonwealth or common law marriage, whatever you want to call it, uh, anymore. I'm pretty sure they did once upon a time. But I mean, I, I consider us essentially married at this point. Like, we've been together for freaking ever, so... Kindness is the way more often than not, exactly. You feel the same way whenever you think it's a bad thing about people. Some of them, you just can't help it when they sting so bad or when they're acting so odd. I mean, you had a lady literally tell me she found a nice porcelain smoking pipe on the ground and then complained about breaking it and then just kind of went off on the bus. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's... <laughs> oh, Lord. That's a thing. <laughs> yeah, see? <laughs> That's our thing. Like, Mr. Noodle and I don't really even care about getting the, the paper and whatnot. She just really wants a, an opal ring and a main coon. Like, that's that's all she cares about. <laughs> uh, I should just be glad it's not diamond, you know? She could be begging for a diamond ring, and diamonds are overpriced junk. 
so <laughs> I mean they're not junk they're they're pretty and all but they uh yeah kind of ridiculous too noodle still wanting that main coon she'll never stop it's been 10 years now and she hasn't stopped so <laughs> I think it's always gonna it's always gonna be a thing and she'll get it I promise noodle you're gonna get it sooner or later just chill love Opal is better. I mean, I'm glad you think that way. I honestly, like, diamonds are pretty, but I like other gemstones better. Like, because the, the big thing with diamond is that they sparkle, right? Like, when the light shines through them, the way they split the light and whatnot. But it's not like you're you're taking your, your diamond ring and holding it up into the light to see the, the different wavelengths we split out from it. Or, or whatever, you know? I think other gemstones, like like opal and, and things, um, not very good with my minerals, but <laughs> they just look better. Like, you know? The, the, the pretty colors of them, and they still shine in the light and all that. Like, I don't know. I just think they're better than, than diamonds, personally. You don't really see the purpose of marriage or weddings. Why would you spend so much money on something so frivolous for one day? Not to mention that shit is expensive. Yeah, especially for, like... I, I I grew up in a Christian household, but I don't practice any religion anymore. So a Christian wedding to me just, I don't know. Like, I, there's nothing wrong with it, but like, why would I care either, you know? But, and then yeah, expensive as shit too for nothing. <laughs> like, <laughs> sooner? Uh, I didn't say sooner, love. <laughs> or if I did, I, I was probably saying something else and... Got sidetracked. Home, so he stops right, then. You legit were living in the house that should have been oh, in your name. Or should have been in my name. My mom's like, I don't think he'd appreciate the premarital relations. I'm like, you are lucky there wasn't any physical will for me to take you to court. <laughs> oh, Lord. That's ridiculous, man. Yeah, I couldn't imagine that. That's, <laughs> that's stupid. Yeah, my mother, I don't think I would have any sort of problem with. If I had to, like, move in with her or something like that. Um, I don't see that happening. But if it did become necessary, my mom, she's, she's, she's very cool and open about things, so. See, I'm the same, like, you prefer silver to gold. I do like gold, but honestly, I would probably pick silver over gold. Like, gold looks cool to me, don't get me wrong, but I kind of like the, the sparkle of, of silver better. Um, but I, I don't put much weight on either one, though, to be honest with you, because, like, there's a lot of metals if you take care of and polish properly and whatnot can look really cool. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, da -da -da. I think some of the messages may have got cut off here. You plan on being married by a priest of Dudism? I don't know what that is, but... <laughs> but hey, sounds like a plan to me, man. <laughs> you do it. You do it and you have fun with it. I liked one of my... I call her an aunt, but she's not technically. Got married on Halloween night. And uh, that was pretty cool. Everyone was dressed up in costumes and whatnot. That was a fun time. She did technically have a priest come. I don't know if he was a real priest or if it was just someone dressed up as a priest. But yeah, there was like a giant bonfire in the background and everybody was in costumes. It was a fun time. It was a lot of fun. Miss Stream is the best. Yeah. Yeah, my mom's pretty awesome. To be honest with you. She's got her own problems, of course, too. Don't get me wrong. But she's a... She's a good woman, though. And my family is just a very accepting and open family in general. Well, you know, my, my mom, my grandpa, who who is the the one that actually raised me, um, etc. Like, there's some shitty people in my family, of course, but yeah, you know. Mind you, a bit of a Reddit story where a bride wanted one of her bridesmaids necklace because it was opal and pretty. And she went off because the bridesmaid said no, because her fiance suddenly bought it and the bride kicked her out. Like, seriously, over a necklace? That is ridiculous, man. <laughs> I The whole Bridezilla thing really irks me, too. Like, how are you just gonna... Like, I understand it's your, your wedding day or whatever it's supposed to be about you, but holy shit, just calm down. Like, you're making... 
you're what's ruining the day, right? Like you being so petty and stupid over shit like that. You're currently extra salty over the house. I went up to share herself from them not paying tax and rose gold is nice. Noodle silver is the one that's always held in my heart. She, yeah, she really likes rose gold. I think it's for the color, right? That's why you like it so much, Mr. Noodle. Dudism is basically just a religion of don't be an ass. Well, I mean, I can get behind that. That's <laughs> Sounds like a good idea to me. So I'm thinking this machine is where we come if we collect 300 of those orbs. Because every time we come over here, the little orb thingies light up in the corner. But you don't like jewelry with gems or anything? You actually prefer men's accessories? I don't wear anything anymore. I don't wear necklaces. I don't wear rings. I took out my earrings a long time ago. Like, I, I'm just not an accessory person. In general. You hate Bridezilla's, yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a great religion. I really like pantheism, if we're gonna go on, on that route. That's, if I had to pick a religion, that's probably what I would actually call myself, but... I'm gonna go quick shower, so you're not gonna be able to hear you. That's fine, Mr. Noodle. Enjoy your shower, love. Hey, whenever you get out of the shower, if you wanna warm me up a slice of pizza or two, that would be awesome. Actually, you know what? The stream's only got about another half hour, which, speaking of, holy shit, it's been 45 minutes. We, uh, we missed our, our break, so we'll catch up on chat, and then we're going to take a, a very quick break, and maybe I'll just go get my uh, own <laughs> uh, own pizza. Gonna Did your brother join a religion about turtles or something, stream? Uh, no, <laughs> the Flying Spaghetti Monster. The Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. Uh, he, he was joining that, and I didn't end up getting it for him, but for his birthday one year, I was going to get him... A, uh, I forget what it was called exactly, but it was basically like a, there's a website you can go to and agree to be a, a, a priest or whatever. I, I forget technical terminology because it was so long ago, but yeah, you can like sign some paperwork and get a thing printed out and all that BS. Yeah. <laughs> what happened to paleontology? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was trying to think of pantheism earlier whenever I was saying it, but uh, as we all know by now, words are not my strong suit. <laughs> I'll hail the flying spaghetti monster. Oh, Lord. Gonna call it a night. Have a good night, Ruth. Thank you for being here for a little bit, man. I, it's, uh, it's nice talking to you. I missed you there for a couple days, but I hope you're doing well, and I hope you have a good night. And uh, see you in a few days, man. Or a couple days, maybe. But, <laughs> you know. Later, man. Uh, for everybody else, we are gonna take that short break real quick. Uh, so it'll just be like two, three minutes while I probably warm up a real quick slice of pizza and uh, stretch out, get a drink and all that BS. And then we'll be right back. The art for the game, I think, looks really nice, too, at least in like the, the cut scenes and the character portraits and all that stuff. The actual game art looks pretty decent from what we've seen so far. The models maybe are a little simplistic, the but present. that's fine. You know, who cares? Wait, please help me understand. What a hassle. Come on, follow me. If you ask Kagome, she can probably explain things. And I'm not 100% positive if they did or not, but it looks like they may have actually taken the time to do the, the lip syncing for the English version of the game, which is Kaede's nice. Village is just ahead. Come on now. You don't always see that with old games and old anime and stuff like that, you know? I'm a little scared, but I guess I should go. There might be someone that knows me there. Looks great, especially for the time it was released. Agreed, man. And like, yeah, the the 3D models, like I was saying, they look a little chibi-esque, you know, a little a little small and cutesy, but. There's a strange smell. I think that demon's buddies are around. But all of the pre-rendered forest and background and whatnot all looks really good. Definitely makes up for it. What? The smell of demons is coming from that purple light. There's some purple haze, man. What should I do? Not weird at all. <laughs> what are you talking about? Let's go after him. It should be easy if you use the red light again. Hey, here they come. Alright, so we just gotta walk into it, get our battle tutorial real quick. Teach us how to fight, man. Come on. Let's go. The real meat and potato of the games now. <laughs> now I mean it's a from what I remember it's a fairly bog standard JRPG style combat system i guess we'll find out here in just a moment all right looks like we got our turn order up in the top right that's nice helps make uh, strategizing a little bit easier 
So we got battle. That should just be our regular attacks. Tech. What's tech do? We got normal, special, and co-op. So co-op is something that we can do together, not mastered. Can we still do it, though? Nope. Okay. That's fair. Then we got special, I think this stands for. Don't know how to do that. Normal tech. Don't know how to do any of that either, man. <laughs> All right. And then uh, we got items, of course, and then we can defend and run away. The animations on the menu are a little bit annoying just because it makes everything take longer. Not the end of the world, I guess. We'll, uh, we'll attack the bad luck bat. Just give him a little, give him a little slap real quick. Oh, look at that. Look at that nice punch we just gave him, man. Pretty sure we just punched the air more than anything, but, you know. What does uh, Mr. Inuyasha know? Nothing. Must be pretty early in the storyline here, man. He can't even, uh, doesn't know a single technique. Just, uh, <laughs> just smacking stuff with the sword. That's all he can do. All right. All right, fine. <laughs> it's weird. Uh, the overworld looks nicer than the, the uh, battle arena here. Normally in games, I would expect to kind of see the opposite, you know? Since the, the battle arenas are all, like, just small sections of the world. Normally, in my experience, at least to my memory, normally they're uh, laid out a little bit better. A little bit higher poly, a little bit cleaner textures. But not in this case. It looks like it's basically using the same 3D models that it did for the overworld. Oh, yeah. Hey, we got a nice level up. Very cool. Michulu got 8 experience points and 77 money. Inuyasha learned Iron Reaver SS. Hey, you got some wings to make? Heck yeah, man. I ended up making chicken alfredo. We were talking about it the other day. I just couldn't. I couldn't. I had to. <laughs> Nothing special, though. We just got a jar of alfredo sauce and then uh, jizzed it up a little bit with some uh, brown butter, some garlic. Uh, some chicken, spices, and all that stuff. And uh, just to give it a little bit of our own personal flair and poured that over some noodles with some, hey, like I said, some chicken. All right. You're almost out of green tea. That's no good, man. You get yourself some more green tea. I had a cup of, uh, it was just black tea earlier. Just some, uh, nothing fancy, a little bit of Lipton black tea, calf tea. Had that right before I got on stream. It's pretty good. Here's a big cup of it. <laughs> My only complaint is Lipton decaf tastes so bland. Like, it's not very strong. Like, just for, for a regular size mug, I feel like it takes two or three tea bags just to make a decent cup of tea. I guess it's ridiculous, but I prefer not drinking caffeine, so I don't have a whole lot of choice there. I wish it was easier to uh, get a hold of Tetley decaf tea around here because that's my preferred brand of tea and what I would definitely be buying if uh, I had access to it. But sadly, our local grocer doesn't sell it. Although I haven't checked at other grocery stores in the area. I've only checked like the, the largest one, the Walmart. So who knows? Maybe one of the other ones, like a, a Giant Eagle or something, maybe they would carry some Tetley tea. I'll have to check that out. I could never get that into green tea, sadly. I've tried it a couple times, like homemade green tea, and I just can't get into it. The only one I can really get into is like the, the Lipton green citrus tea. Like those are pretty decent, but. Oh Lord. Okay. I mean, I don't think I can go any faster, right? No, okay, so we're just. <laughs> Oh, we can. Hold up. Oh, shit. Okay, if we tap X, we can, like, swim fast. I'm sure he probably told us that at some point, and I just completely missed it. Well, there's no way we're, we're winning this race. Giant Eagle has more of a variety. Got yeah, to check it out. Oh, we missed one. Ah, whatever. I'm done. I don't care. Can we... We can exit level. Return to Rainbow Plus. Yeah, so we don't even have to go back to the end to get there. That's nice. You do as a lifesaver, nothing wrong with some Lipton. It's still your go-to for classic sweet tea, but you just prefer the fancier ones for your hot cups. See, I don't like sweet tea. 
Well, I mean, like, I put some sugar in mine, but, like, American-style sweet tea, I don't like it. I like hot tea with a splash of milk and uh, a bit of sugar. That's 100% how I prefer it. I don't care for sweet tea. I do like lemon sweet iced tea. Like, that's okay. But most of the time, it's so much sugar in it that I just can't drink it. It's, it's too much. But yeah, I'll definitely, uh, I'll check out Giant Eagle. Or drive up to like the uh, the Kroger's or something like that. Because I would imagine they would have an even larger selection. Fresh rainforest air. See the cute wallabies. Surf the slippery water slide. Watch out for those leeches. Wait, what? Aged green tea? I never even heard of that before. I'd have to give that a try one of these days. If they make it in decaf, at least. I do kind of want to try matcha one of these days, but matcha is actually fairly high in caffeine. At least as far as tea goes. So, I mean, maybe someday just to try it, but I don't know. This time, that truck has broken down at the end of the forest road. And yeah, I'm not gonna sit here and talk shit, shit here. I'm not gonna sit here and talk shit on Lipton tea or anything like that. It's fine. But I definitely prefer, like, a, a Tetley English blend or something like that. Shoot, bet. I'm on my way. Sorry, I'm eating my pizza here. So... Okay, so we're hunting for that, that lady tiger that we seem to always be hunting for. No surprise there, I guess. But of course, before we do that, we gotta run around and search the area that we're in. Can we... Oh, I was thinking, like, maybe we could climb the trees up on those mushrooms there or something, but nope. That's a no-go, it looks like. Just background shit. That's fine. You prefer hot tea like that. It's your main drink, but you still make some sweet tea in summer. You gotta make it. Sierra makes it way too sweet. That's how Mr. Noodle is as well. <laughs> Mr. Noodle basically drinks uh, sugar syrup with tea flavoring in it. <laughs> Something else that's really good. I don't know if you've ever had it, but uh, tea lattes from like Tim Hortons and whatnot. Those are really good. This time... I really like those. It's basically just, you know, hot tea with milk. But they, they froth it all up a little bit, make it a little bit more creamy. It's uh it's good. It's good stuff. Yeah, their tea's pretty decent. It's not I don't know if I'd go as far as saying it's the best tea, but it is pretty decent. Well, they're hot tea. I, I've never tried their their sweet iced tea or anything like that. So I, I don't have an opinion there. It could be trash for all I know. <laughs> Age one, you have was homegrown your grandma's friend gave it to her from her own farm and then she passed it was one of the things you got yes you love hot black tea that is insane man that is actually kind of crazy but uh that's awesome though that you were able to get it i mean it's sad to hear that she's passed on now but i didn't even know we had anybody around here that grew tea that's sick bigelow vanilla chai tea oh yeah that's mr noodles like go to bigelow vanilla chai with do you put, do you put milk and stuff in it? Yeah, you turn it into a latte, don't you, most of the time? Because we have a, a milk frother steamer thing here at the house. You usually turn it into a latte yourself, don't you, Mr. Noodle? Just brew up the tea and then uh, froth some milk up, dump them together with a bit of sugar. Honestly, like, it does smell pretty good. The only reason I've never tried it that I can remember is because of the, uh... She uses real sugar, and it has, it's not decaf. But I mean, if it was made with Splendor or something, I'd probably try it. You don't add sugar, just creamer. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, that kind of creamer has a bunch of sugar in it, so. I mean, you don't technically add any sugar, I guess, but it's basically, uh, <laughs> it's basically sugar, let's be honest. Here's some 
free advice. I'll take Certain it. Certain enemies deflect Jerangs with their thick skins, but are hopeless against those pearly whites of yours. <laughs> so sometimes you have to bite the bad guy. All right. Can we can we bite him? Well, okay. Well, you told me I had to bite him. Oh, so we have to like hit him with the boomerang to flip him on his back, and then we can bite him. That worked. Grandma had a wi widespread life and made friends from many walks of life. She was given a tribal name? That's sick, man. That's really cool. I was gonna say, it sounds like a pretty neat lady. <laughs> I can't imagine, like... Man, that'd be awesome to know somebody that grew to you. I, I really like growing stuff. <laughs> I don't have my own garden or anything right now, but I do have the a couple hydroponic systems that I think I've talked about on stream before. Um, I only have one setup growing right now. It's just growing different herbs, but I want to someday grow like tomatoes and peppers and different kinds of salad greens and stuff like that. I just think it's one of the coolest things, you know, you just put these little tiny seeds in some dirt, give them some water, or in my case, put them in a growing medium and flood them with water, basically, <laughs> and then give them time and they just, you know, spring up. Just life comes out of nowhere. It's crazy, man. It's really neat. And of course, this shit just tastes delicious too, so... That's a pretty big bonus. <laughs> if you need dill, we have plenty to give you. Yeah, I... <laughs> the dill is really growing fast. <laughs> I'm gonna end up using a bunch of it for, like, pickles or something at some point. I just haven't bought the stuff to make pickles. But sooner or later, I'll stop being so lazy, buy some cucumbers, chop them up, and flood them with some vinegar. Bro, we got a sliding minigame? Hell yeah. What's wrong with my pickles, Mr. Noodle? They're pickles. I mean, they have a slightly higher vinegar to water ratio than most people's pickles do. But... Technically, they're technically pickles. They're pickled, pickled cucumbers. Like I said, the, the water to vinegar ratio is just a little bit off. They're a cold pack pickle. You post the container and pick on Discord? I have to check that out after stream. But yeah, <laughs> so what Mr. Noodle's talking about, for anybody that doesn't know, my uh, my pickle recipe, it's one of the easiest ones you'll ever learn in your life, right? You just take a nice clean container, chop up some cucumbers however you like them chopped. You could leave them whole even if you wanted to, but I, I like uh, I like slicing them. I've done spears before, that's okay, but I, I like slices. Anyways, you slice them up, you put them in the container. I don't measure, but you just uh, put a, a fair amount of salt on there. A little bit of pepper if you're into that sort of thing. I don't usually put pepper. Some dill. And then you just uh, put enough vinegar in there to cover everything. And then you close the container. <laughs> That's it. Simplest pickle recipe in the world, man. Don't have to worry about any water ratios or anything like that. You don't ever have to worry about not having enough acidity in your pickle. Like, it's... Uh, <laughs> it's fine. You just close it up and call it a day. It's great. <laughs> it, uh... It technically could... It, it's terrible for your teeth. And it could, I guess, probably burn your esophagus. But, I mean, like, it's fine. Hey, I'm still alive. I've been eating them forever now. <laughs> I love it. it. It's, honest to God, my favorite kind of, uh... My favorite kind of pickle. They are delicious. And, uh, you can put any kind of seasoning you want in. My grandparents always really liked putting pepper in theirs. Um, I've put garlic in it before. It's good with garlic. Uh, onion. It's really good with some onion down in there. Um, and then dill. I, I like taking some fresh or even dry dill and putting in there. But growing up, I usually just made it with literally just salt, vinegar, cucumber. Let it sit for a day or two and <laughs> that's all you need. You have to try that chai tea. It's one of the ones you haven't given a true chance yet. I mean, like I said, it smells really good. And as Mr. Noodle has already made clear, she uh, she loves it. So 
Would suggest, man. They are pretty good, just sometimes too salty. I mean, it's a pickle. They're supposed to be salty. That's how I look at it, you know? But you also don't like salt as much as I do either, though. So I guess, yeah. That's where, uh... We're a little bit different there, I guess. <laughs> Duncan's has a pretty good chai tea latte. I didn't even know they had chai tea lattes there. Well, you might have told me, Mr. Noodle. I don't remember, though. I know I've never tried them from Duncan's, but Tim Hortons is good. Oh, chai... Well, okay, I guess I've never tried the chai tea latte from Tim Hortons. I've only ever tried the, uh, the black tea latte. Usually decaf. But, uh, they do have chai tea lattes there as well. I think that's actually, like, the, the normal one on the menu is a chai tea latte, I believe. I just usually got it black because that's how I prefer... Uh, preferred it. That, and they may not have had chai tea and decaf. I don't remember. It's been a long time since I used to get them semi-regularly. May have to take you up on the deal because now I want to make some homemade pickles. <laughs> oh, Lord. You totally should, man. It, it is really good. So the problem with the dill is that unless I'm willing to kill the stalk, it's hard to harvest. Um... Because, like, it hasn't gone out. It's mostly just grown tall. But it's getting too tall for my hydroponic system. So, like, it's it's just, it's being a pain in the ass. But I, I've taken a little bit and put on, like, sandwiches and things before. And it is pretty good, though. Like, no complaints on the quality of it. It just kind of sucks. I'm either, like, I have to kill the whole stock or... I, right now it's burning because it's too tall for the system. But I can't really cut that much more from it at the moment. So I'm at an impasse here. I'm like, what the hell am I going to do with it? I can't really harvest much, but I can't leave it either because it's just going to die, get burnt to death. It's pretty good, though. Like I said, I, I like it. And I can definitely harvest a little bit more off of it. I'll probably do that tonight after I'm done streaming, to be honest with you. Collect a little bit more of it up. I've just been putting it in uh, the freezer to keep it all nice and, and fresh until I'm ready to use it. Um, Cause like, I, you can put it in the oven on a very low temperature or get a dehydrator or whatever and make dried herbs, obviously, but so some sitting on the counter too. Yeah, I do have a tiny bit sitting on the counter. It's only like one sprig or whatever the hell you want to call it though. It's not very much on the counter. That and a little bit of curly parsley. Which <laughs> I was looking up like what exactly is curly parsley. And according to Google, it's basically just parsley that is uh, less favorable to eat. Like, it doesn't have as much flavor, but it's prettier because of how it grows curly. So most people just kind of use it for decorations. And so I'm kind of like, why the hell did they... Oh, Lord, that's a big boulder. Why the hell... Oh, man, we're still sliding down this hill. Why the hell did they include that, of all things, with this growing kit? You know, why wouldn't they just have regular parsley? My only guess is that it has something to do with, um, like, the, the growing heights and whatnot, since there is obviously limited space. Yes, I mean, really, it's any vinegar that you like. I just don't suggest white vinegar, because white vinegar has no flavor. And since it is mostly a, a vinegar product, you want as much, uh, you want a, a nice flavorful vinegar. I've made, like, pickled onions and stuff with white wine vinegar and rice vinegar. Both have turned out really well. But as far as just uh, my normal pickle recipe that I grew up with, yeah, it was uh, apple cider was the go-to. Uh, apple cider, it's... Uh... Oh, I thought you meant my stream was broken. I got very confused there for a moment. Um, <laughs> uh, but anyways, yeah, as far as, like, it's a cheap vinegar and it has a shit ton of flavor... So I don't think you can really get any better than, than apple cider. Um, but if you want to save a little bit of money, but still try something like white wine vinegar, you can uh, you can mix it with what, just plain white vinegar and white wine vinegar. That way you can get you know the benefits of having something nice and flavorful, but you're not breaking the bank emptying out a bottle and a half of white wine vinegar for some pickles. <laughs> Keeping those blue tongues off me back while I fill up my watering bottle. No worries. Thanks, possum. That turned out pretty good. Yeah, yeah, they're pretty good. They're pretty good that way. 
Or, well, I don't remember. Did we make pickles that way? I We've done pickled stuff, like pickled onions and shit like that before. But I don't remember if we ever actually did... Um... Are we, are we trying to hit this dude, or...? Yeah, okay, so we, we are trying to hit these dudes, okay. <laughs> I was a little confused on what we were supposed to be doing exactly here. Okay. We gotta, sorry, I'm concentrating a little bit. <laughs> uh, well, that one made it through. Oh, uh, well, I'm guessing she probably would have gave us something. Yeah, so we gotta try this again. Oh, maybe it was just the onion. I think it maybe was just the onions. I'm not 100% sure, but... Yeah, so for anybody who's wondering what Italian cucumbers are that Mr. Noodle's talking about, that's basically just uh, cucumber salad but with extra vinegar added onto it. <laughs> and uh, she doesn't like tomatoes. So it's tomato-less as well. It's just cucumber and uh, Italian and then seasoning and uh, some added vinegar. Also very, very good. Delicious things, but yeah, I don't actually think we made any pickled cucumbers this year, love, now that you mention it. Okay, so this one here ends up going a little bit farther than I than I expected. Oh no! Another one's gonna get through! Trash! Oh wait! Hold on. Come on, hurry up, come back, come back, come back, come back! You crap! I hate this game now. Almost there. Let's have another We got it this time, I believe in us. Hit the boulders with your rank, so Freaking blue tongues, man. These boulders just like don't spawn in fast enough. Alright, there we go. We just gotta keep hitting them with these first three. Don't even let them get past the first three, then we don't gotta worry about it. Come on, dude. Walk on up here and go. Yeah, buddy. Hit it. Quick, quick. Hit him. Thank you. Uh, number two. There you go. Oh, no. I hit the button too early. Ah. Okay. It's all right. Everything's going to be okay. All right. We got that one. We can go back to the third one. All right. Is the first one going to spawn in in time? It's not. This is the last guy, though. It says there's only one left on top there. That should be it, hopefully. Yes. Okay. We actually got it that time. <laughs> But yeah, also really good. I like putting a little bit of salt in mine, but again, I like salt. Um, and I always use Olive Garden Italian dressing because it is by far the best Italian dressing for that sort of thing. And then if you like tomatoes, you can put a little bit of tomato in it. And that's a little bit more traditional having it that way for like a cucumber salad sort of deal. But yeah, it's, it's very good. Uh, if you can't tell, I really like vinegar. <laughs> I like sour stuff. I like vinegar. Hence my, my pickles that I make, straight vinegar, and a cucumber salad with extra vinegar added into it, like. Oh yeah, the knockoff Audi Italian, uh, Olive Garden Italian is very, very good. Highly suggest it. It's good in salads and in like cucumbers and shit like that. It's an excellent choice and it's like a dollar cheaper or something like that for a bottle of it than, than the actual Olive Garden one. Excellent choice, honestly. But, with that, it looks like it's doing a quick save for it, for us, which is awesome. Um, I'm gonna go to save game anyways, just to make sure it's saved. But we are out of time for night, for tonight. It is 1.30, and thankfully we found the girl that we were looking for. Like, we caught up if anybody was actually paying attention to the game. I know I was hardly paying attention to it. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so we're gonna, we're gonna sit and chill and just kinda chat for a minute or two while we, uh, while we sign off. But that is gonna be it for the gameplay tonight. So, anybody who just came for that, thank you so much for being here. And for everybody else, well, like I guess we'll we'll chill and talk for a minute or two while I uh while I eat my my pizza. I already warmed up my pizza, Mr. Noodle, but and so I'm just gonna sit here and talk while I kind of eat it, talk about vinegar and cucumbers and shit.